Okay, in this video we're going to talk about uh, different types of air masses uh, that might form and cause some different weather patterns. Uh, this is going to be related to the concepts of uh, cold fronts and warm fronts, high pressure systems, low pressure systems. Uh, so what we're talking about with an air mass uh, in weather terms is basically any, any group of air, any kind of area of air that has similar temperature and moisture throughout. So basically we're taking just one big pocket of air that's all pretty similar and uniform throughout and considering it as one big air mass. All right, so there's four key words, four key vocab terms that we have to know for air masses. So polar, tropical, continental, and maritime. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video real quick and uh, try and brainstorm in your head what are some of the words that come to mind when you think of these different uh, vocab terms here. Uh, so yeah, pause the video real quick and try and think of uh, what comes to mind uh, when you see these four words. Okay, so uh, the air mass vocabulary here, I'm hoping that you came up with uh, some of these words on your own. Uh, polar air masses, those form over frigid regions of the earth, and we'll look at a map in a sec to see where some of these uh, polar air masses may form. But the key word that you want to think of when it comes to polar air masses is that these are cold. They're going to form uh, either in the very northern parts of the globe or the very southern parts. Uh, they're going to be polar, cold, that's the two words you want to associate together. A tropical air mass, on the other hand, these form over tropical regions. So we're thinking maybe the Caribbean or areas like that, uh, maybe certain areas of South America. Right, so tropical air masses, you can probably picture in your head, are going to be warm. If you go to a tropical island, right, that's, that's going to be something that's warm and people go on vacation there for a reason, whereas a uh, cold polar area wouldn't be as, as pleasant to uh, vacation to. So polar equals cold and tropical equals warm. You definitely need to be able to associate those two terms with their respective uh, descriptions. Okay, and the last two here, maybe a little less intuitive. Continental air masses, they form over land. So if you think continental has the word continent in it, right, that means that these air masses are forming over land on the continents. Uh, so continental air masses, the word you want to associate with them is going to be dry because these are forming over land compared to uh, over water. There's going to be less moisture in them and the air is going to be more dry as a result. Uh, and the last vocab term here was maritime. Maritime masses form over water. So maritime is, uh, is a vocab word that maybe you've heard before, uh, usually going to be related to something uh, seafaring or sea related. Uh, so maritime air masses, they form over water. And because of that, these air masses are going to be wet. All right. So we have kind of two pairs of, of vocab terms here. We have polar and tropical, which are going to give you cold and warm air masses respectively. So cold for polar and warm for tropical. And we have continental and maritime air masses. One's going to be dry because it forms over land and the other's going to be wet because it forms over water. So basically the reason for this is because in a maritime air mass forming over water, all that water from the ocean is going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot more moisture in the air from the evaporated water. Um, so that's going to create uh, obviously a wet air mass or a more moist air mass. Whereas continental masses, they're forming over land, that's going to be much more dry because it doesn't have all that mo nearly as much moisture uh, coming up from the land as there is coming up from uh, bodies of water. All right, so we can look at each uh, type of air mass individually here. Uh, so a maritime tropical air mass. So if we kind of piece together our vocab terms here, we could obviously uh, describe what this uh, air mass is going to bring. So maritime, we said that maritime is going to mean a wet air mass, and then a tropical is going to mean warm. So the maritime tropical air, air, ma air mass is going to be a warm and wet air mass. And again, it formed over water because uh, we uh, because it was maritime. Uh, the label for this is lowercase m, uppercase t. All right, so all these, you're going to see a pattern with the labeling of these air masses. Uh, for maritime tropical, it's going to be lowercase m, uppercase t. So we're looking for something that came from a tropical region. So again, down towards uh, near, closer to the equator and also formed over water. So this could be a maritime tropical mass that may be formed here over the Atlantic Ocean. It could be maybe a maritime tropical mass that formed over the Pacific Ocean. Either of these would be maritime air masses and how we would see those in the United States 
is they would move in from this direction from the Pacific or from this direction from the Atlantic. Uh, that's, that's the way that we could possibly get uh, uh, maritime tropical air masses in the United States. We're more likely to see these coming from the Pacific because of the way the jet stream is, uh, but it isn't impossible to get these coming from the Atlantic, and we do see that uh, occasionally. Okay, maritime polar air mass, you can kind of hopefully start seeing the patterns here, right? Maritime, again, is going to mean a wet air mass, and polar is going to mean a cold air mass, right? So we have a cold, wet air mass, and we know it formed over water because it's maritime. The label here is going to be lowercase m, uppercase p, maritime, and polar. So the pattern for these labels here is you're going to say first whether it's maritime or tropical with a lowercase letter, and then second, whether it's uh, continental or polar, or sorry, I mix those up. First, you're going to say whether it's maritime or continental uh, with a lowercase letter at the beginning. And then secondly, you're going to say whether it is polar or tropical with an uppercase letter at the end. All right, so a maritime polar air mass uh, we could get from uh, the northern parts of the oceans here. So we could get from uh, the northern Pacific Ocean here, uh, maybe in the northern Atlantic Ocean. Uh, maybe even up in the Arctic. Uh, these, these maritime polar masses are gonna give you uh, moist, cold air. Uh, this is where we'll get some uh, snowstorms from, things of that nature. All right, our next type of air mass, continental tropical. So hopefully we can put, put this together on our own at this point. Continental means that it's going to be dry. Tropical means that it's going to be warm. And so we have a warm, dry air mass. It formed over land. How do we know that? Because it's a continental air mass. So the label for this is going to be lowercase c and uppercase t. So again, first comes whether or not it's continental or maritime, and then second comes whether it's tropical or polar, uh, lowercase first and uppercase second, and kind of piece some of these together uh, as you've seen so far. A continental tropical air mass will form over land in a tropical region. We might see this coming out from Central America uh, or even from Mexico uh, towards the United States. Um, so this is again going to bring warm, dry air. And our last type of air mass here would be continental polar. So with a continental polar air mass, it's continental, so we know it's going to be dry, and it's polar, so we know it's going to be cold. This is labeled as continental polar, lowercase c, uppercase p, again based on the pattern that we just described. And it's going to be a cold, dry air mass formed over land because we had continental over land and then polar tells us that it's gonna be cold as well. We would see this type of air mass in the United States coming down from Canada and the Arctic Circle there. Um, this would bring some cold, dry air into the United States from there. All right, thanks for watching this video on air masses and I'll see you in the next one.